Hello students myself Monil Pawagdi from Greenwood International School today we are going to learn chapter 1 that is integers let us start with different types of numbers first of all we have already studied about natural numbers natural numbers are the numbers which starts from 1 and in tends to infinite second one is whole numbers which includes all the natural numbers and zero and third comes integers today we are going to learn briefly about integers now we will learn about integers integers includes positive numbers zero and negative numbers we can say that integers are the numbers which includes all the whole numbers and all the negative numbers now we'll see some of the properties of addition and subtraction of integers first of all we'll learn about closure property closure property states that if you add any two integers the answer should be an integer for example if we take two numbers minus 3 and 1 If we add both the integers minus three and one, we get answer as minus two, and we can see that minus two is also an integer. Second is closure under subtraction. That is, for subtraction, we will check the closure property. If we have two numbers a and b, the closure property states that if I subtract b from a, it should be an integer. If I take two numbers two and three. subtract 3 3 from 2 so i will get 2 minus 3 as minus 1 we can clearly see that minus 1 is also an integer so we can say that closure property is applicable on addition and subtraction of integers next one is commutative property for any two integers a and b we can say that a plus b equals to b plus a that means for any two integers if we add integers in any of the order the answer should be same if i take two numbers 5 and minus 6 so if i add 5 plus minus 6 or minus 6 plus 5 the answer would be minus 1 therefore we can say that commutative property is applicable for addition of integers but if we check for subtraction the commutative property for subtraction is not applicable in integers next is associative property addition is associative for integers for any integers a b and c we can say a plus b plus c is equals to a plus b plus c so we can say, say that for addition of any integers if order is changed then it does not make any difference but for subtraction this properties are not applicable so we can say that subtraction is not associative for integers now let us learn about additive identity zero is an additive identity for all numbers if you add any number with zero the answer will be the number itself for example if i take number minus 8 and if i add zero with it i will get minus 8 as my answer second if i take minus 37 so if i add minus 37 to zero then the answer would be minus 37 by this we can say whenever we add any of the number with zero we'll get that number itself In this example we are supposed to find out the pair of integers whose sum is minus 3 here we are supposed to find the pair of integers whose sum is minus 3 so we should add any two integers and get minus 3 as our answer so i select minus 1 and minus 2 as pair of integers so if i add minus 1 and minus 2 answer would be minus 3 similarly if i select Two integers as minus five and two, 
If I add minus 5 and 2, I will get answer is minus 3. Second, difference is minus 5. Here we are supposed to find the difference of two integers whose answer is minus 5. Let me get two integers as minus 9 and minus 4. If I subtract minus 4 from minus 9, I will get minus 5 as my answer. And similarly, if I subtract 3 from minus 2, I will get minus 5 as my answer. In third one, difference is 2. Here also we are supposed to find the difference of any two integers whose answer is 2. Let me select two integers, minus 7 and minus 9. If I subtract minus 9 from minus 7, I will get 2 as my answer. Similarly, if I subtract minus 1 from 1, I will get 2 as my answer. D. Sum is 0. I have to select any two integers whose sum is 0. So, minus 10 plus 10 plus 5 minus 5. For this, you can select the integers with opposite sign. If I select 10, then select another integer as minus 10. So, the sum would be 0. Similarly, if I select minus 5, then select 5. So, the sum would be equal to 0. Now, let us study multiplication of integers. Multiplication of positive and a negative integer. If I have one positive integer and another negative integer, for example, a into minus b or minus a into b will result to minus a into b. Simply, just multiply both the numbers and keep minus sign in front if one integer is positive and one integer is negative let us understand that by an example if we have two integers as minus 2 and 5 if i multiply minus 2 and 5 first of all just multiply 2 and 5 we'll get 2 5s are 10 and keep minus sign in front of number so we'll get minus 10 as our answer Next, if I have 3 and minus 5, multiply 3 and 5 will get 15 and keep minus sign before minus, uh, 15. So, we'll get answer as minus 15. Now, multiplication of two negative integers. If I have any two negative integers and I, I multiply both of them, then I will get answer as positive integer. For example, if I have minus 10 and minus 12, if I multiply both the numbers, so I will get 12 tens are 120 and minus minus would be plus. So my answer would be 120. Similarly, if I have 15 minus 15 and minus 6. So if I multiply minus 15 and minus 6, I will get answer as 90. 15, 6 are 90 and minus minus plus. So the answer would be 90. Now we will learn about the properties of multiplication of integers. First of all, we will see closer property under multiplication. Here we can see if I multiply any two integers, the answer would be an integer. Similarly, if I multiply any two integer in any order, if I multiply a into b or if I multiply b into a, the answer would be same. So closer property and commutative, commutative property both are applicable for integers. Now, if we talk about the multiplication of any integer by 0, then the multiplication of any integer by 0 will always give the answer as 0. For example, if I have minus 3 and I will multiply 0 with it, so I will get answer as 0. If I multiply minus 4 with 0, the answer would be always 0. So it states that whenever any number is multiplied by 0, the answer would be always 0. Second is multiplicative identity. According to multiplicative identity, if any number is multiplied by 1, we will get the answer as the number itself. For example, if 2 is multiplied by 1, we will get 2 as the answer. If I multiply minus 3 with 1, the answer would be minus 3. So multiplicative identity states that a into 1 is equals to 1 into a equals to a. So if you multiply any of the number with 1, the answer would be the number itself.
Now let us learn associativity for multiplication. Associativity for multiplication states that a into b into c is equals to a into b into c. That means like whole numbers, the product of three integers does not depend upon the grouping of integers. And this is called the associative property of for multiplication of integers. Here it make you understand that the grouping does not make any difference on the answer. If I multiply A and B, then I multiply it with C. Or if I multiply B and C, and then I multiply the number with A, the answer for both the cases would be C. Distributive property. A into B plus C is equals to A into B plus A into C. Distributive property is used to make the calculations easy. For example, if I have 16 into 10 plus 2. So, first of all, I will multiply 16 with 10 and will add that with 16 and multiply by 2. So, I will get 16 10 is a 160 plus 16 2 is a 32 which gives 160 plus 32 equals to 192. Now, we'll study about division of integers. When we divide a negative integer by a positive integer, we divide them as whole numbers and then put a minus sign before the quotient. We thus get a negative integer. For example, 72 divided by minus 8. We know 72 divided by 8 is 9. So 8, 9 is a 72 and just substitute minus in front of the number. So answer would be minus 9. And 50 divided by minus 10. So 10, 5 is a 50. So the answer would be 5 and the negative sign before the number. So answer would be minus 5. Now, properties of division of integers. For any integer a, when a is divided by 0, is not defined, but 0 divided by a is equals to 0. That means whenever you divide any number with 0, the answer will be not defined. As we do not have that term, and when 0 is divided by any number, the answer would be always 0. And when any integer is divided by 1, the answer would be the same integer. For example, a is divided by 1, the answer would be a again. Let us understand one example. A shopkeeper earns a profit of 1 rupee by selling 1 pen and incurs a loss of 40 paise per pencil while selling pencils of her old stock. In a particular month, she incurred a loss of 5 rupees. In this period, she sold 45 pens. How many pencils did she sell in this period? In the next month, she earns neither profit nor loss. If she sold 70 pens, how many pencils did she sell? Here we know the profit earned by selling 1 pen is equal to 1 rupees. As she had sold 45 pence in the particular month, she would be having a profit of 45 rupees. And in the question, it is given that in the first month, the total loss at the end of the month was 5 rupees. So, we can say that profit earned plus loss incurred equals to total loss. To find the total loss, we can add the profit plus loss incurred at the end of the month. So, the total was of, uh, loss was of 50 rupees. Now I will convert 50 rupees into paise. That will be 5000 paise. Now we know that loss incurred by selling one pencil was 40 paise. So the number of pencils sold is equals to total loss upon loss incurred in one pencil. So we'll get 5000 upon 40 would be equal to 125 pencils. So in the first particular month, she sold 45 pence and 125 pencils. In the next month, there is neither profit nor loss. So, profit earned plus loss incurred is equals to zero. Here, profit earned is equals to 
seventy because she sold seventy pens. Here she had loss of seventy rupees. So on converting that in paise, I will get the loss of seven thousand paise. When I will divide seven thousand paise with forty paise, will be equal to one seventy five pences. So in the second month. She sold one seventy five pencils and seventy pens, so she earned no profit, no loss.